so excited, excited. I'm excited. So if you guys aren't excited, I'm excited. I'm bringing the excitement and the the energy and all the jazz. So, bye. Hi. <laughs> I love your background. How are you? I'm good. Let me turn volume here. Okay, yeah. so how do I get on on my side? Because you know, I, I I'm still new to this whole situation. Um, so it it just shows on one side. It just oh, shows okay. So, okay, but you, it's it's also live on my side. I hope. Oh, it'll, hi, it'll, Steve. It'll tell, them, <laughs> it'll tell <laughs> them that you're live. It'll tell them that you're live and bring them to the room. Okay, awesome. Good. Okay, good. Because the last time I did a live, it didn't show. So I'm not sure. It only showed one side, but it didn't show like on, you know, like both uh, of our ends. Yeah. But hey! Nice to see you. <laughs> do you nice prefer I call you Faye or Faye Salah? I don't even know. Um, do prefer? Either one. Either one. Uh, a lot of people oh. have started calling me Faye Salah now. So I'm, I'm with it. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm so excited. Me too, me too. So, okay, so tell us, I always like to start with something on budding related. So tell us about your background. Okay. Like, what is that? Is okay, that so I, I feel like everybody already knows my background. <laughs> I, um, but um, at my background was actually in architecture. So I was an architect for about almost 20 years, which mm -hmm. sort of ages me a little, but <laughs> won't let anybody know. Uh, yeah, I did architecture. I studied architecture in college and um, actually, at the age of 19, I was already in, you know, working as an uh, architect, you know, working at an architectural firm, not as an architect, but working at an architectural firm. So I did that for almost 20 years, and um, I was doing, like, the invitations, like, on the side. It was just a hobby. I designed my own wedding invitations. It's, like, the same story as most um, stationers. Mm -hmm. um, and then it just, um, I realized when I did the invitations, I was getting a lot of family members and, you know, relatives just asking me to design their own wedding invitations for them. And I was like, you know what, I can actually make money doing this. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so I took that leap of faith, um, actually May 2013. I was already working, I was working as an architect while doing, you know, while doing Ijerere. I established Ijerere like in 2008, um, but I went full throttle in May 2013 when I opened up my own venue. So I actually had, used to have a former venue and just no regrets. I just, I love, you know, I love what I do now. I love being my own boss. <laughs> Let's just say that. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, there's definitely, there's definitely um, work that comes with being your own boss, but it's it's also yeah. very rewarding. So, I mean, I, I, I totally yeah. agree. I, when I was younger, I wanted to be an architect, actually, when I was in high school. Are um, you serious? Yeah, I went to school in Nigeria for, like, for boarding school, and my favorite class was technical drawing. So after oh that, God. I was like, I'm going to be an architect, I'm going to be an architect. But then when I got to high school, I started to really enjoy physics. Uh, and I was, so I always knew I was going to go down something STEM-related. Uh, but then mm -hmm. I really wanted to go to... University of Pennsylvania, and I did get in, but they did not have architectural engineering. And I was at this oh, crossroad. Yeah. Basically, it meant, it meant becoming an engineer or becoming an architect. And so, right. when I to, at that time, I was like, I'm going to be an engineer. So I decided to go a different route, and I ended up in computer engineering, which I which I don't regret going down that path. I learned a lot mm -hmm. going that way. But um, I definitely, you know, hear you coming from like a STEM you know kind of background um yeah, yeah. that and ended up in, in the wedding industry there's actually Definitely quite a few like of us <laughs> what did you but say i was saying there's actually quite a few of us in the wedding industry who started in yeah like, yeah like, yeah 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 so you know i have no regrets of being my own boss uh you know now i've been doing each other right now for um 12 going 12 13 years now you know, and I'm finding myself at, at once again at a, a crossroad where I feel like I want to just um, empower more women and just kind of like mentor and and teach everything that I, I know um, as an entrepreneur because, man, you know, I didn't have any help. There was nobody basically kind of telling me what to do. So lots of mistakes were made. And, you know, now I feel like uh, I'm at that point, you know, where I'm I've, you've, I think you know that I actually do this, um, I'm a speaker at this uh, artist stationery conference that I do every year yeah. in Atlanta. So yeah, so I do that and now I just, I really love, 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 love talking about, you know, my journey and just sort of like 
explaining and like teaching others, you know, what to do so that they're not making the same mistakes that I did. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's, that's what I'm doing now. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. And again, yeah. similar here. Um, I definitely do more coaching. I talk more about it on my, my page, Faye Shola. Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah, I definitely do some coaching, um, a, a good amount of speaking. And it is really exciting to share because they're definitely, when you don't know, you kind of spend some time spinning your wheels. Um, so it's you nice. Know, this to industry is so strange too. They don't, you know, you don't really get a lot of people who share information, you know? Mm -hmm. That seems to be an issue here in the industry. Yeah. I mean, they're sharing there's a lot of people share inspiration, but they don't necessarily yeah. share information. Um, and that's something that I've, I've seen a lot. Like people are like, Oh, you're just believing in yourself, chase your dream. But they don't <laughs> tell you like, well, it's like, Oh, just be luxury, be nice, be kind. And it's like, that's great. But then how do I like actually find clients? How do I do this? How do I do that? So I, I I'm more passionate about teaching about the business side, um, rather right. than teaching people how to become a wedding planner more teaching like this yeah. learning school i went to nyu and i love the program but oh, really? okay. yeah i mean i went to i went to penn undergrad i went to nyu for my certification and event management okay. great but there's not a lot in teaching you how to run a business like right and get your own client that is so true planner. so i like to teach other stuff like marketing like systems stuff like that that will help mm -hmm. you in your actual business like that's more what i'm passionate about i um, mean there are some people who are amazing at teaching how to become a wedding planner and i think that you know they do a great job mm -hmm. and what they do but that's not necessarily what I'm passionate about teaching because that's not really mm -hmm. what I think right now is necessarily the void so that's kind of where I'm yeah I think that things. there's a the difference between and you know and I, and I tell this to people you know as in my own personal page too there's a difference between inspiring and empowering people you know in my opinion I think when you inspire people, it's like, you know, oh, wow, you know, it's kind of like going to a speaking uh, engagement and then listening to somebody on, uh, you know, on a stage and they're talking about something really inspirational. You feel really good and then you leave and then you forget, you know, like mm -hmm. you just, that's it. But I think when you empower people, then you're actually giving them the tools so that mm -hmm. they can thrive in their business. So there's a big difference between, in my opinion, inspiring and empowering people. And by the way, I went to NYIT. I used to live in New York. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. And I went to CUNY, too, for a, for a minute. <laughs> I've been to a lot of colleges. <laughs> <laughs> well, that brings us to today. Um, so for everyone who doesn't know, who may not know, I'm Facial. I'm the owner of Statuesque Events. We're wedding planner, a wedding planning company, and we love planning and designing weddings. And for today, we are going to be empowering brides um, with tools to help you uh, navigate through you know, wedding planning, but specifically mm -hmm. as it relates to invitation. So that's what we're talking about today mm -hmm. uh, with, with yeah. um, Jure Ray. And obviously right now invitations are maybe slightly complicated <laughs> because, <laughs> because a lot of, you know, there are people who have tentative wedding dates. Some people, you may have rescheduled your wedding to next year, but you know, for a lot of people who have small wedding dates, it's still tentative. So you mm -hmm. may not be in that phase of, oh, let me send invitations, you know, six months ahead of time because you're not sure mm -hmm. if the wedding is going to take place six months ahead of time so it's a, it's a lot of nuances there and that's why we wanted to have this live just to talk through that and talk through some options so before i get too far into that i one of the things i love the most about um Ijori is that i a long time ago she sent me a box of samples and i, <laughs> I forgot about that i forgot I whole, yeah i have a whole box of samples and the reason that i love having a box of samples is that you know obviously this is our office statues events office and when people come in, I like to be able to show them stuff. Like people like to put their hands on stuff, right? And see what it looks like. So this is an invitation suite, like from the sample box. You can see yeah. how pretty. And I believe this is one of the invitations that's in your ready-made shop. Yes, too. it is. It's one of, that was the, actually the custom one. And then I based that custom one off of the ready-to-order. The ready-to-orders are all solid colors. The custom one yeah. has that watercolor because that's an you know, added you know, attribute to it. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a lot here. I mean, I have a whole bunch of stuff, the whole box. Like, there's some um, different options, like booklet style invitations. Yeah, I forgot all about that. <laughs> I tell people all the time, like, uh, there are a lot of people who have promised me sample boxes. Very few have actually yeah. sent them to me. So when I have are you them, serious? I them. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh yeah, this is this one of my gorgeous ones. Oh my, I love that mirrored one. Yeah, y'all see that shine? Y'all see that shine? I mean, this is, this is, you know, it's more expensive though because it's acrylic, but this is like, if you're trying to go with something real solid um, and then it matches the style 
So I yes, mean, yeah, that old movie. Hollywood, you know, yeah, it's like an old Hollywood theme, yeah, yeah, with more inserts inside. So I mean, it's it's really pretty. Really, there's like I could go on and on. Though. There's a whole bunch of stuff here, but I mean, that's one of the things I, that I love is being able to put your hands on stuff. Um, and I know we worked on a wedding this year, and I actually I couldn't find the invitation. That's the one I couldn't find today. Are you uh, serious? But, yeah, that's my candy ready to order. Yeah, it's that was very order. Uh, but I believe you set her sample, right? So when people are interested, they can they can buy a sample and just see what it looks right. like, um, and then come back later and order it, which is important because you want to touch stuff, right? Like I'm sure you guys like. Yeah. I see people commenting saying that the invitations are gorgeous, um, and it's really it's it's it, it they are gorgeous, um, and sometimes you just want to touch it just to see what you know people's experience is going to be like when they receive it. So. Um, I mean, that's pretty much one of the things that I love having the box um, in the office, which I can show to clients when they come in and give them an idea of what they're going to expect, especially when you're paying for premium invitations. You want to kind of that's see. Right. So, yeah. um, why don't you, I'm going to start with you and just say, what is the value in buying and like spending a lot of money on invitations, right? Like what is the value in getting a nice invitation versus maybe sending people a um, something that you printed yourself or like why why does it matter what your invitations look like when you send it to people in your words yeah I, you know i know it sounds kind of cliche but honestly the invitation really is that first impression you know it is the first impression to you know your grand day your ijarere right mm -hmm. you know so it's kind of like what type of first impression do you want your guests to have what is the first impression do you want it to be something that's kind of mediocre and so that they won't feel excited about, you know, maybe going shopping to get a really nice outfit to come to your wedding. You know, do you want them to, is it just a, a casual laid back wedding? And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, if you want, if it's, if having, you know, your once in a lifetime, you know, big moment is not that special to you, then you can do your, you know, DIY, you know, printed on your own printer type invitation, you know, some people, they, they just don't think that's, you know, really that important. Um, but I think that for most people, at least a lot of my clients and a lot of your clients, I'm sure, you know, their grand day, their wedding day is something that they're hoping will be there forever. You know, this is an intimate moment and you want to really make that first impression. So, the value of, you know, having an invitation, uh, especially a personalized one, is to really evoke that feeling of how you want, you know, what you want your guests to feel about your event, you know, and you want, do you want them to be excited? Do you want them to feel like, oh my God, this is going to be so grandiose. I mean, I have people, I am not joking, these are true experiences where they came to me for invitations, you know, brides and, you know, and their grooms, you know, and the, the guests received the invitation and they had to change the venue because everybody was like, oh my God, I heard that you, you know, that your invitation or they saw the invitation. It was so amazing. I'm so excited. I hope I'm getting an invitation, you know? Mm -hmm. And so the invitation actually super exceeded the wedding, you know, and they had to change the venue to a bigger venue to accommodate all the people who are coming just because of this invitation. Mm -hmm. So it really does set the tone. It really is the first impression. Um, when I receive an invitation, that determines if I'm going to wear something completely brand new or if it's going to be something that I've already worn a hundred times and I don't care, you know, or it could even determine if I'm even going to go or not, to be honest. Maybe I'll just send them a gift because it doesn't look like it's gonna be something that's so exciting. So that's the value, you know, it's how do you want your guests to feel about your, you know, grand day? Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely agree with that. I think definitely mm -hmm. when, um, for instance, uh, Tracia's wedding, we ordered your invitations. And when people received mm -hmm. it, they were like, oh, wow, this is going to be a fancy event. Okay. Yeah. And they, were kind of, they, were like, they just understood, like, this is going to be a nice affair. Um, and that's mm -hmm. definitely, you know, a big deal. I think that uh, with, with some of our clients, um, they also go with, like, a concierge service. So um, mm -hmm. that's even, like, you know, having pretty invitations. But then on top of that, them understanding, like, oh, I'm shipping this back to the wedding planner, not to the bride so then people are like oh it's going to be organized like they have it under control so people tend to it affects the way that they approach things like people understand like oh i need to rsvp because other people they are involved accordingly. Yeah. Or it, it affects people's um people's behavior and that's one of the things a lot of times people say oh i want to have a beautiful event but one thing i always tell people is 
a lot of times when you have a, an elegant event um, and you present it in an elegant way, it kind of causes, it affects people's behavior. Like people kind of yeah. behave according to what they see. So if it's That's something what I'm saying. Together, sometimes people are like, oh, well, whatever. Uh, I mean, this this goes even, it's invitations, but also even on the event day. Like if you walk mm -hmm. into an event and it's like in a gym and it's kind of thrown together, people just kind of do whatever they want. But if it's a nice exactly. space, people pay attention. I mean, I've done a wedding. There was one wedding I did. It was 700 people. And when it came down, it came down to the speeches, for the most part, people were quiet. Of course, there were a couple outliers. But for the most part, people paid attention <laughs> because no one wants to be the one loud person who doesn't seem to know how to right. act in this nice, classy affair. So it's one of those things that it, it kind of, in addition to it being beautiful and everybody wants a beautiful event, it kind of helps to keep like the decorum in the room a little bit too. So I, I definitely would agree with that. Um, no, yeah, people come and they dress accordingly, you know? They dress accordingly according to the invitation that they received, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. a big one. I mean that's that's absolutely a fact. So, um, so I guess for everyone who doesn't know, what does Ijo really mean? It means it's a it's actually two words that I made one, and it's a Nigerian Yoruba name. It means Ijo actually means day, and Rere means grand. So a day that is grand. I mm -hmm. my mom came up with that name for me. I wanted something that encompassed you know, celebrations, uh, all kinds of celebrations, whether it's weddings or anniversaries, birthday parties, and it's really a grand day. So each other means, you know, for your grand day. Awesome. And I know it's a mouthful. A lot of people still have a hard time saying it. <laughs> yeah, being that it's Nigerian, but... Yeah, and I mean, right now, you know, Afrobeats is the thing, you know, so it's like people, you know, they're getting it, they're learning it. The same way we learn a lot yeah. of fancy words from Europe, like, you know, people can pronounce each other. I actually so thought fun. about changing <laughs> the name at one time, you know, but I was talking to my business strategist and he says, it's already branded. You've had this for over a decade, you know, so at this point, everybody recognize, even if they don't know how to pronounce it, they recognize the word, you know, they, they, yeah. they recognize that word, they recognize the logo. So it's, it's here to stay. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So, um, obviously I showed some of the printed invitations. I love it. I love, I showed the process, like what it looks like when you open an invitation and it comes out of the envelope and, you know, you can kind of mm -hmm. see it. I know the lighting is kind of bright. Let me bring it closer. Yeah, you can see the process, bring it out, and you can see all the textures. That's and everything. my diamond piece. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I have a lot of them here. So you can see, like, oh, there's, the, there's a process that comes with it. So I know that recently, um, especially now with COVID-19 and a lot of things going on, mm -hmm. and, you know, people are, I mean, frankly, invitations are going out sooner to the day because of, because of there's mm -hmm. so much um, um, uncertainty in the air, right? So yeah. I've kind of... You know, unfortunately, like I would say about a month before everything hit, I have one of my clients that we just ordered their invitations and then we had to reschedule. So we're going to have to order a new set of invitations for their for their wedding. Wow. Um, but, you know, obviously, like if you since we know we're in a pandemic and we're going to have to um, adjust to it more people are going to be sending out the invitations closer to the event, especially for those who are still trying to have events in the, in the fall or in the winter for next yeah. year. Hopefully, you know, everything in the news is right and we'll have I'm the vaccine hoping. by the end of the year oh, and everything. So hopefully by next spring, we'll be good to go. But for those who are still mm -hmm. looking for like fall events, stuff like that, um, or, or winter, um, you know, event, the invitations will probably be coming out sooner because we want to be sure that the event's happening. So mm -hmm. um, I wanted to ask you two questions. So how long generally does it take you to make one of these custom invitations, right? Like I remember the process going through designing the invitations last year for some of mm -hmm. our events and it's intric intricate. So it takes some time. And actually, not only did you design for one of our events, you made a uh, menu cards for my own dad's birthday party. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I definitely yeah, saw Everybody my dad, loved that. Like, Oh my gosh. I was on video chat with my dad right before this. And he was like, I was like, I gotta go. You know, we're talking to my mom for, we weren't even calling him. We were calling my mom for mother's day. And he's just like, Oh, I'm here with my wine. I'm like, first of all, it's not your holiday. Okay. Stop your holiday. This isn't about you. But my dad likes to turn up. He likes the party. He likes his music, whatever. We, we danced until 4am on his birthday. So obviously 
his yeah. his birthday was a music themed birthday, so I knew I wanted this, and so I was like, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna call you because I know you can do it, and it ended up being so beautiful. Yeah. He took it home. My dad took copies. He has them in, in the house in Nigeria. Oh my gosh, that is so nice to hear. I mean, yeah. and you can see even the feel of the paper is like really soft. It has that smooth, you know, and yeah. So yeah, it's soft, I put a lot of love into it. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah. we definitely appreciated it. it. It added a really nice touch. But, that was so a I really mean, popular one. Yeah, it was. I was just like, come on, music notes. I just saw it in my head. And I was like, I think she'll yeah. understand music notes. But um, so, yeah, that was definitely a collab that came out really good. But so why don't, so how long generally does it take you to make an invitation, a menu card, something like that that's custom? Like, how long does it take? Um, I know that for my, and I think, I think, my, you know, we may have trimmed a little on the time on my end, but I also was very sure of what I wanted. But generally, yeah. how much time do you ask for time to go through de designing these? And oh. then how long does it take to get like digital invitations? So like, what is the okay. contrast there? Yeah. Okay. okay. So custom invitations, usually it takes, depending on the clients that I have, it takes about two weeks or so just to kind of go through the design process. And it's just, it's the design. We are not even in production yet. And mm -hmm. then for how, depending on how intricate the design is when we are doing something custom, I mean, custom could be anything. It could be something simple and it could be something very complex, but it's custom because we are making that specifically for that client, right? So the time frame it really depends on the complexity of what the client wants and their budget and everything like that. And I would say typically around four to six weeks from when they approve the design. So two weeks at another four to six weeks from when they approve the design is normally when they should expect to do something custom. Now for my ready to order collection, you know, cause that's, a, that's, the, that's basically a custom suite that I have creatively cut corners to make it more affordable for clients. And I, I won't say it's the cheapest, but it's certainly like mid range. Cause a lot of people, you know, when I first started off, I was doing a lot of uh, just mainly custom. I wasn't doing any ready to order. It was strictly custom invitations. So that's what people were, you know, coming to me for. I even tried one time years ago before coming up with this new ready to order collection to do, um, a, you know, a DIY, like very reasonable, inexpensive $6 type range. But nobody was coming to me for that. People would always come to me for custom. And I realized that's my niche. So I don't, I shouldn't even try to navigate away from that. That's what people come to me for. And so I stuck with that. And then later on, I was like, okay, I need to find another way to sort of make like more passive income or so, you know, where this, I can still give a little bit of glam, but still make it affordable or more obtainable for clients. So I came up with the ready to order collection. That one it's already set. The designs already exist. So you can go online and you can just order. I don't even have to talk to you. I don't even, I don't need to know you or anything because custom orders, you usually have, it's more holding hands, right? It's a more luxury experience. So I'm catering to the client's need. It's a completely different experience from when you're doing ready to order. Ready to order, you just go online. I don't talk to you. There's no interaction. I send you to draft. That only takes three weeks. Mm -hmm. That literally takes 21, 21 days or less because it's already a set template and it's still really beautiful. Yeah, it's still a beautiful design and it's based off the custom designs that I've done before for a previous client. I just kind of toned everything down and made it more affordable. Now the digital one, which I just launched because of this pandemic, that's once again already a set template. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Just like, okay, good. Okay, because I was hearing a little static -y thing. Yeah. So the digital ones, that is so inexpensive because they're digital, right? You know, it's, it's virtual. It's pa like paperless posts or like e-bikes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I can see you now. Yeah, you just yeah, I can see you. Yeah. yeah, a call just came in for some strange reason. Even when I put the do, uh, do not disturb, so I don't know what happened. But anywho, yeah. So for the digital, like I was saying, that is literally within an hour or two that I can get that over once the person sends me their information, right? Mm -hmm. So that doesn't take any time at all. That's like literally almost immediate that same day. So I guess, okay, so that makes sense. So when someone orders an invitation, how many people can they mm -hmm. send it to? Like, what's the process? 
So for the digital, the way I've made it is I've added a little animation just to make it more fun, make it look more like a paperless po uh, post. You know, mm -hmm. you can send it to as many people as you want because it's electronic. There's no limitation to who you need to send it to. Then I am offering now concierge service for people who are not familiar with places like Paperless Post or Greenvelope, where they have the platform for like RSVP information, like, you know, or accommodations information. I can actually do all, upload all of that. And I would actually, it, it's actually a great service to event planners like you, because I take that out of your hand. We manage that part, because I know that when I send invitations to you, and you have to receive the RSVP, you still have to do a little bit of coordination. I'm sure you do that. Um, I know planners who have to write the numbers at the back of the RSVP envelopes because some people won't put their names, so you don't know who is responding, right? So with, when you're doing the digital um, invitations, the wonderful thing about that is we take that off your head for when we provide the concierge service, when it comes to the inserts. So not only do we upload the design we've created for you and send it out, you know, but we actually manage all the people who are SVP. And then we send that to you or we send that to the bride or we send that to both of you, however way, you know, is preferred. And so that's, that's how that goes for the digital invitations. And I think it's a really wonderful option. It's inexpensive, especially right now. With all the uncertainties, nobody, everybody's uncomfortable about spending money because we don't know what's going, you know, what's going to happen yeah. if there's, you know, people are losing their jobs and stuff. So I thought, okay, what can I do to still give uh, an affordable but still beautiful option to brides, especially during this COVID-19? You know, and the best option, I think, was to go ahead and do, you know, do the digital invitations. Yeah, I mean, I love that because, I mean, I'm, I'm that person. I love sending digital cards to people, like, for birthdays. I send digital cards sometimes mm -hmm. on anniversaries and stuff like that, just so people can see. And I, and I would say, as much as I do digital invitations a lot, just seeing the animation of the envelope opening and all that, it, it yeah. makes you feel, it feels, it makes you feel better than receiving, like, an evite or receiving, like, exactly. it still feels like, okay, I'm being invited and you see your name written on it and all of that. So I think that, mm -hmm. you know, for certain, for certain um, options, you see that I'm sure with, with the concierge that you can add the, the name option on the envelopes, but those are, it's, I just like that part of it because it still feels luxurious, but it's digital. It's green for those people who care about going green and not uh, maybe using, you know, limiting the amount of paper. You have all that, but without mm -hmm. taking away um, just making it elegant and pretty and, and making Absolutely. it special for, for receiving it. So I definitely wanted to talk about that because I know when you launched it, I was like, oh, I love this because I've always known about Green Velope. I've known about Paperless Post. Mm -hmm. um, even Punchbowl also has some options. So I've known about those exactly. options for some time. Um, but it was nice to see that, you know, you have some digital options. So is there an option for, for those people who want something custom with digital, and I, I know I'm throwing a curveball. Is there an option for a custom digital invitation for someone who's like, okay, you know what? I like this, but I don't want, you know, the, the, the canned idea or like, what if they have a color that's not available in the digital or something? Absolutely, like that? absolutely. You know, you know, I specialize in custom designs. That's my specialty. And I didn't want to take away from the Ejerere brand because COVID-19 happened. Like that's not gonna happen, right? So. I have a, my ready to order, all of my ready to order are now or digital. So that digital option is there. It's only $25 because it's already there. You know, all I'm doing is adding animation and changing your colors, changing your content. But I had one client just last week with another planner that I'm working with for her wedding for September of next year. And we are doing digital, we're going digital and we're doing a custom. She doesn't want anything that anybody already has before. She wants something totally, you know, custom. And we're going to do that for her and we're still going to animate and, you know, animate it for her. Yeah. Okay. So there's still options yeah. for, the, the, for that. Absolutely. So, then, so that's what makes it kind of different for than, you know, maybe ordering online. And also, I mean, the fact that it's, I'm sure the custom is not $25. The, the, the price probably depends on the design. But yeah, the, the custom the ones are $450, $450 for the custom one because we have mm -hmm. to start from scratch, right? We have to literally go through the same design process as we would for if you're printing. Mm -hmm. You know, the only thing that's, that we're not doing here is not, you're not paying for the printing. You're not paying for the, produ the material or the production. That's, you're not, that's all the only thing about that. But you're paying for my time to actually do the research, 
figure out what your style is, what it is that you want, you know, do like a whole sort of like a, almost like a mood board so we can really understand what the client wants. And we go through that whole two week process. So you just pay for the design time and the, you know, the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah no i mean that makes total sense and i mean i know definitely like one thing when i during one of my meetings with like you know a couple of, of our clients that we've had together they were definitely like they really enjoyed the process like they enjoyed um just you know being able to tweak things understand how much text can mm -hmm. be put on on the page because i think that you know you know a lot of times there are certain people who just know that they want something custom they know they want something out of this world um but then sometimes people are like well what's the value of it and i think a big thing is that i mean there are some partners that i work with and i do work with frequently um and mm -hmm. they, they don't do custom but you're also limited mm -hmm. because it's a template right so you can only put but so many words and you know so many places mm -hmm. and stuff like that but sometimes people are like oh i want to say this and i want to say that and i want to add this and you can't really do that because you can't really finesse mm -hmm. a template so a lot of times the value of custom is really being able to say what you want to say the way you want to say it yeah it's it's personalization I, I don't know anybody who says no to personalization everybody wants their own stamp they want to see their own signature they want to see things you know they want something that really tells people about who they are their you know their personality and the wonderful thing is i'm able to whatever that person's story is i'm able to convey it in design you know mm -hmm. through design i'm able to convey that person's personality whether they're boho chic or maybe they're you know old hollywood glam or they're just a contemporary modern bride if they like acrylics i mean even my digital have acrylic options i don't know that uh, green envelope or paperless post even do acrylic digital you know digital invitations i haven't seen any of that mm -hmm. everything you see is a solid yeah. paper yeah but some of mine are uh, uh clear acrylic so you can actually see through and it still goes through the animation they mm -hmm. never even thought that far you know mm -hmm. so i like that you know you're doing something custom and the wonderful thing about digital custom invitations is that there is no limitation because it's not a physical thing so you can do whatever. You can make it open up into a car if you want to, you know, because it's digital. It's not real. So the limits, there's no limits. You know, it's unlimited when you're doing something that's digital. That's the wonderful part about that. Yeah. And I mean, people can still, like, a lot of times people like that, the, um, the image of, you know, people opening the invitations, posting on Instagram stories mm -hmm. and tagging. You can still do that with the digital, right? Like, if someone can yeah. watch it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know it. Um, and, and share it online. So, so that sounds really yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, I mean, the pandemic, it really sucks. But I mean, even with the digital invitations, I realized that there's still, there's still ways to be super creative and still, you know, survive during this whole situation and also make it, re you know, mutually beneficial for the client and also the vendor, you know? Yeah. So, I, 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 yeah, it's it's totally, it's it's not horrible. I, I hope that anybody who is online who are also stationaries, besides being, you know, um, brides or potential, you know, couples or something, that stationaries should know that during this whole situation, you have to think about what is a need right now. You know, I still see a lot of stationaries who are pushing invitations. Um, I mean, I do throwbacks. I still put my invitations there. It's, it's not like we've stopped for business. But at the same time, you have to be cognizant of what's going on right now. And what's going on right now, you have to be accommodating towards that. What do people need right now? Mm -hmm. What do people need right now? And I had to think about it. And once I realized what it was, then I put it out. Yeah. And I mean, I think that's yeah. real. Right? I think that for us... Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, like you said, you're not closer business. We're not closer business. We've actually booked a couple of clients since the COVID-19 yeah. started. And I mean, we, we had a couple who were interested as well for their weddings in the fall. But I think that now they're revisiting, you know, dates. So we're, we're still in touch, right? And then just seeing where things will land. We're still in business, but the service is different. Like right now, it's more yeah. of like consulting, like talking through like, okay, like when do we reschedule and all of that. And it's, it's, a, it's, it's a delicate it's a delicate balancing act right now, right? Because yeah. there were, some, some vendors weren't that willing, you know, at first to reschedule too far out. Now I think that right. people understand the reality of the situation. So it's easier they to reschedule too far out. 
But I think that yeah. at first people were like, oh no, you can only schedule a couple months at a time or whatever. And I don't want to do anything that's going to cost my clients way more unnecessarily. Yeah. But I think that now it's with the reality of the situation where we're rescheduling more, more weddings further out. I mean, at the, initially we rescheduled all weddings through July, but now, mm-hmm. you know, fall weddings are getting rescheduled. You know, it's, it's, I mean, it's just kind of what it is and that's totally fine. We're fine with it. I mean, as much as it would have been nice to have the weddings this year, um, what's more important than safety, right? And I think, and not only safety, but being able to do the wedding in the way that you want. I think that one thing to consider is that, like, do you want a whole bunch of vendors at your wedding in mass? Like, mm-hmm, you know, do you mm-hmm. want a whole bunch of vendors? Mm-hmm. Um, um, do you want, like, you know, your to limit the number of people who can come with your photographer and videographer, et cetera, because you're trying to limit the number of people in the room. Like, do you want, um, some people, you know, sometimes people are like, oh, plated is more, more elegant than buffet. I would differ a little bit when it comes to like our blended culture events. Cause I talked about yeah. this in the when it comes to blended cultures, please don't tell me to pick if I want this food or that food, because I want both. I want both. So <laughs> I do. You like when you come to weddings, if I'm going to, and I have to explain this to a lot of my clients, I'm like, if I am going, well, right now I eat a lot of Ethiopian food just in general because I enjoy it. But let's say really? I do. But yeah, I, I enjoy it. And I, I, my church is in Silver Spring. There's a lot of Ethiopian restaurants near there. So I just. Oh, to, really? Yeah, I, just I don't like Ethiopian, Ethiopian food that much. <laughs> I, I, I don't know why. You know, I like, especially vegetarian stuff, right? I also like Indian okay. food. But let's, but let's say I didn't okay. like, let's say I never, I, I'm not that familiar with the food, right? If I am like, oh, my Ethiopian friend is getting married. I want to eat Ethiopian food while I'm there. Like, why? I don't know. Like, I don't want pasta. I don't want, That's like, true. That's true. Like, like, I, like, I came to experience the essence of you guys and your culture and everything. So that's what I want to eat. Right. So the same thing, if you're blending culture, it's like, don't tell me to pick one, one, one thing. I want <laughs> both. Like, we had a Mexican and Nigerian wedding last year. People ate the quesadillas and they ate the goat meat. And, like, they want and both. Like, you know, okay. and I hope that was jello. I want that, so. People, so, you, so it's, you know, I don't say one is better than the other, but having a buffet is going to be complicated if we're doing it in the middle of a pan- yeah. pandemic. So there's you just know? certain things, like, I care more about making sure the end result, I'm more end result focused mm-hmm. than, like, the right yeah. now. So I care more about making sure the end result works out well, that I'm you know, not incurring any unnecessary fees between now and then for my clients and that, you know, and that they're enjoying the process. So it's different. I don't mind, you know, the fact that we're pushing events into next year. And I, I would say it's a little different because our team, we have... Mm-hmm. We have a number of people on our team, so we can spread out the work between us, but I don't mind having more events next year. And unfortunately, sadly, I, a lot of the events we were going to have this year, we're going to have to push out, but I care more about safety and, and you know, and all mm-hmm. of that. So, I mean, what I would say is I, the reason I asked you those questions as far as like how long does it take to produce these, these invitations mm-hmm. is that, you know, sometimes people have questions. They're in the middle of wedding planning. There might be people watching this. Mm-hmm. this the replay will also be on YouTube, but some people may be wondering mm-hmm. like, okay, what do I when do I need to order invitations by, right? Like, let's say I'm, I'm shooting for a, a November wedding and I'm hoping that I'll be able to have that November wedding. And who knows, you may be able to, but when is the drop dead date that I need to order it? The answer seems to be, if you want a custom invitation, like something acrylic for re- like a real um, physical, mm-hmm. you know, invitation that's acrylic or a custom of some sort, you need to order it no later than probably three months before the event because it's going to take you Absolutely. to receive it and you want to give people time to RSVP. So that means at the three month mark, you have to make a decision if you're going to order it or not. Um, if you are going to order digital, though, you can wait until probably like six weeks before the event because if you're customizing it, then you know you'll have it by a month beforehand. Um, and if you're not customizing it, you'll have it that day. So mm-hmm. the, uh, you have the the invitation to send. I out. think. Go ahead. I think even further, like. Um, it also depends on if they're doing like a destination wedding, even though I'm not sure when people are going to be traveling because of the pandemic. If you're doing a destination wedding, then you want to order way, way in advance because you need to give your guests way in advance so that they can book their tickets to wherever they're going to be going to for your wedding. So if you want something custom and you know that majority of your people are not local, then you want to definitely come to me much sooner than just three months because they need a, the, the, you know, guests need to receive their invitations at least two to three months out, giving them time to get, you know, their, you know, book their flights with, at a reasonable cost. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, and I would say to this, typically the timelines are totally different if it's a destination event. Um, if it's a destination yeah. event, I mean, even if it's not a destination event, most of my clients, we generally try to send the invitations out two months ahead of time, right? Um, yeah. yeah. Like six weeks ahead of time. We try not to do it way too much further because the way people are with physical mail, they'll kind of just take it and be like, oh, I don't need to RSVP till three months later and toss it to the side and forget where they left it, right? Oh, so I yeah. try yeah. to do it at, around that two-month mark. Um, and then save the dates will be earlier. But if it's going to be a destination event, you need to know earlier because people need to know, especially people who are waiting in advance. Who's going to be watching the kids? You know, there's just a lot to consider. Taking taking time off of work uh, because it's not just one day. If it's going to be a destination event, there's mm -hmm. a lot to consider. So you definitely want to send it earlier, uh, like way yeah. in advance. For me, you know, if it's going to be a destination event, I mean, people need to know the date. I would say, if at if at all possible, send that those save the dates at least nine months in advance, maybe even a year. Exactly. You know, I would say a year. I would say a year. You know, I'll just really a year. Months. It's just you know, some people don't plan. They they may be coming to me nine months in advance, so we may not have the same yeah. date <laughs> at that point. But ideally, if you could do it a year, even nine months, most of the time is okay because nine months before mm -hmm. summertime is still the fall. So most of the times mm -hmm. by that point, that still gives people time. It's like the beginning of the school year; they can figure out what they're going to do in the summer so sending mm -hmm. that out at that nine mark and then sending invitations out at least like at least three maybe even four months before so that you can get the RSVPs right. in advance um and and mark you know you know and mark things down with the final balances and all of that so people need to know definitely in in both cases early but it, the, the stakes are higher if it's a destination event um so yeah I mean that I mean it's definitely helpful to know and I think that the digital because I think that some people may have been able to put two and two together as to why digital invitations are helpful during COVID-19. But I kind of wanted to yeah. like drill it in as to why digital. Yeah, I, because, no, you know, I appreciate it, that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like that turnaround. Because that was the first thing I, I thought when I saw that you launched it. I was like, oh, yeah, so that means the turnaround time is going to be quicker, which yeah. means that yeah. people, because right now people are going to be waiting longer to send those final notices, especially for fall weddings, mm -hmm. to say, oh, yeah, I'm ready right. to go. So at least for people to know, like, okay, Digital is an option if I need to wait until a month or two to make the final call. Then that's an option for, for me that I can get yeah. um, because maybe custom may, may not work out, which is fine. I mean, honestly, considering everything that's going on in the world, nobody's going to, like, people are going to totally understand. They're, they're just happy to celebrate with you and they just want to come out. So, you know, beautiful, especially Absolutely. if it's a beautiful digital invitation, people, people will be more than happy to receive that. Um, no, absolutely. I mean, you know, the COVID definitely has changed things. Um, I think in a way it, that we it's just looking at the silver lining, I feel like, like this will actually sort of reduce the amount of expense for the bride and groom in reality, because now you have to consider maybe having a smaller intimate event, right? Mm -hmm. And so you can now actually put more into your wedding in a meaningful way versus trying to figure out how to just have all these people, you know, come. And then that sort of dilutes um, all the niceness that you can possibly put into your wedding decor, maybe. Uh, yeah, this is a great time for digital invitations. That's key. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I think that this will, will end up being like now more intimate events. So if you were, I suppose, I don't think there's going to be 700 people <laughs> weddings, you know, anymore like the one that you did. I'm not too sure, you know. Yeah, I mean, Although, if you have a wedding that big, chances are people are traveling in, you know, and chances are people are traveling in from out of the country as well, you know. Right, right, right. You know, you know I mean, I, I think this, uh, this COVID is going to really alter just how events are done. Um, so, like, for, same here, like, all of my events either have been canceled or the clients that are coming to me now are having weddings towards the end of the year, and they're planning way in advance till next year. So the clients I'm having now are end of this year and next year only. I don't have anything going on anytime soon, you know, not till towards the end of next year. And I think that, you know, it's just... Um, yeah, it's just, I, I think it's safer to do the intimate events now, to put in more into the events. Um, I, I don't know. I, I just can't see, like, someone doing 700, <laughs> 700, you know, or even 200 people anymore after this situation, you know, is going. And 
just like you were saying, you know, like having your staff come with their face mask and all of that, it's just going to really change how things are, are. I think that the weddings that I were planning for next year, I can already tell, I won't be surprised if they come to me. I think they were going to invite like 200 people. They probably would end up reducing the amount of um, physical limitations that they need, you know, after this. And which is totally fine with me, you know, it's, we can still do, you know, smaller quantities. It's just going to change how everything is, but it's still not going to stop us, us from having beautiful celebrations. And I just think that intimate events, I prefer those, you know, that's just my preference. Uh, those grandiose events are so hard to manage, you know? I mean, you, you would know, you would know because you're a planner, you know, I just think it's, it's just hard to manage. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's, it's, one, it's one of those things. Some people just have huge families. They have huge friends. Mm -hmm. You know, some people, the, the whole church is invited, you know, when they're having an event. There's just a lot, you know. And I mean, for those who don't know, I'm not, I'm not married yet. And, you know, I'm every church I've ever been part of, I've been heavily involved. Like, I know everybody there. So, you know, yeah. I mean, I although I don't, I'm not easily pressured, but I'm just saying, like, I know a lot of people. So I, I, I definitely understand and sympathize with people who invite a lot of people to their events. Like, I totally get it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also that person mm -hmm. who shows up for other people. As much as I'm busy doing events, like, every cousin, when, when my cousins get married in Nigeria, I'm mm -hmm. there. We get married in, you know, I have a cousin that got married in St. Lucia. I was there. Like, I just show up, you yeah. know? Like, I'm that person who's just like, I will support you. Um, not necessarily expecting anything back, like expecting that you're going to come back, but I do that. So, you know, yeah. I understand if you're that kind of person, like, I can understand where a lot of times um, you, you just end up having a bigger guest list. So I get it. And I actually kind of like larger events. It, you are absolutely you right. Do. I absolutely, you are 100% correct that it's a lot to manage. Yeah. You are 100% yeah. correct. Even my dad's birthday party, my parents' wedding anniversary, which they, my dad at first told me there's How no many way people to showed up for your dad? First, I want to talk about my dad, my parents' wedding anniversary. He said there's no way that they can even see why there would be up to 100 people there. Man, there was over 200 people there. And you were oh saying, my God. <laughs> No, but but the thing is that the thing is that I don't really listen. And with my parents' parties, I'm kind of in charge, you know, since I'm a wedding planner. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm kind of in charge. So they're, they're like, oh, there's no way it's going to be more than this many people. So I just set up for one, like 170 anyway. Right. But then like later on in the night, it's like, oh, we don't have enough seats. So then, you know, the staff help us bring up more stuff. And it's just like, that's, you know, I, I know my family, like I know how we are. But the thing is that like, there's a lot of love there. Like, you know, we're very social yeah. people. Like, we like to have parties. So I understand it. Like I get it. And I like to also have a lot of young people at our at events. Mm -hmm. And I think that sometimes with more intimate events, it's literally, you know, you don't really get to have as many young people because it's like yeah. catered to family. And I, and so I, so that's why I say I get it. Because for me, yeah. like, I want, like, when I picture a wedding, like, picture at least half the people being, like, the age of the people yeah. getting married. And it's hard to do that because you both have families um, and people really to incorporate. True. So I get it. Like, I totally That's understand true. why people do it. And, and obviously, it's not common. We haven't had, it's been about two years since we've had a 500-person wedding. Although that year we had, like, mm -hmm. three 500 people weddings. But um, 300 is, like, that number, right, that I see, that mm -hmm. I still see most, most times with, you know, multicultural events. And I can understand why, because, you know, I, I get it. But a lot of people are reducing it. I mean, this year, I mean, we have a 35-person wedding, but it was always a 35-person wedding. It was never okay. Okay. more than that. It wasn't, like, reduced because of COVID-19. We had another one that was 80 max, which right now we're thinking mm -hmm. it's going to be 50 people. So a lot of people, you know, people who are a little bit more low key and who are just like, I just want a nice event. Um, and I just don't want a lot of people like, you know, it, and it turns out beautifully there as well. It works for them. So I think that, you know, so I, I, you know, I think for me, like as a planner, like I get all the perspectives. Like I, I generally don't try to push people into like, oh, reduce your guest count or do this or that. I will inform you what the guest count is going to do right. to the budget. I will inform you and let you know. <laughs> whatever, but, because, because it's important. It's important. Like we can't we can't be halfway down the road and figuring out that we can't afford catering. Like I need you to right. know up front that this, this is what it's gonna cost. But I won't necessarily say it's better to do one or the other because it really depends. Like for me, even though I know how much it costs and I know how much stress it is, I want a big wedding. <laughs> like I, I just know yeah. I don't have any reasons for it. That's, that's I, I don't what you want to do. Yeah, I don't push people one way or the other, but I'll consult you through the decision making process. But I mean, I'm with you. I, I hear you like with guest counts coming down. I mean, I think travel is going to be affected and travel does right. affect guest count. It's really that. Simple. Yeah, well, I mean, you also yeah. have to think about the guests and how they're thinking. Not all the individuals will be interested in coming because of the situation. So whether you like it, whether you reduce, whether you are thinking about reducing it or not, I think that all the, the people who you were planning, if you were planning to have 100 people, 
out of the 100 people, you know, typically you, you know this because uh, you're a planner. There's usually mm -hmm. about 1% or 2% that are going to decline, right? Mm -hmm. You won't be surprised. They're going to automatically a lot more, there's going to be a lot more declines because of the pandemic. Uh, some people are not going to feel comfortable, especially the elderly people or people who have underlying conditions, right? So automatically, whether you like it or not, whether you want to have the two, two or 300 people, there's going to be, a, I, would see, I would say now maybe about 25 to 30% who are going to decline anyway because they don't feel comfortable, they don't feel safe right now to be in large gatherings. So whether you like it or not, it's going to be reduced because a lot of people just won't feel comfortable. You know? Right, right. Which is, and I mean, yeah. that's part of the process, right? If you want, if, the, yeah. if you're doing really this big event, you need to reschedule to next year. There's really no, there's really yeah. no problem. But if your vision is. I have one guest. I have one, I mean, not a guest. I have one bride. What she did, her wedding is supposed to be this June. So she has extended it to October. And she uh, decided that, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and get married on my wedding day. Um, because the invitation is already done. I did this gorgeous. I haven't even posted it yet. It's such a, it's a custom piece. Beautiful, you know, like um, folio. So it's like the hardboard folio. And all we're going to do is add an insert and say, hey, we already got married on our wedding day. So that's why you're receiving this invitation. However, the grand celebration is going to be in October of this year. So we just added an insert. We're still going to send out the uh, invitations that we already created for her June wedding. And she's just going to go to court and just do, go ahead and do her June wedding on the actual, that's on invitation. It's just that the guests won't be able to be a part of the marriage, you know, until they celebrate later on in the fall. Yeah, and I mean, that's a beautiful way to, to approach it. I think especially if you have, yeah. you know, like, a more grandiose invitation with f inserts or folding and stuff like that, it, it, then that's definitely, a, you know, a good approach um, for, for yeah. repurposing the invitation and letting people know. Yeah. I think it's hard for it because if it's like a one piece, you know, paper, that might be a little harder yeah. for someone to do. But I mean, there's definitely ways. And I mean, that makes perfect sense. Honestly, I mean, if I spent, if I got like a fabulous invitation, we would use that. Like people need to remember the original. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm going to use this invitation. I already have it printed. I'm going to use this invitation. You know, so we just add an extra insert. I know you had mentioned a bride who you probably have to reprint her, you know, new invitations for her. And that made me think about, you know, is it possible for you to even add an extra insert? Maybe if they decide to, just because if the piece is already so beautiful and it's already printed, you know, mm -hmm. so they don't waste that and still give that to the guests. Yeah, and I mean, I think that's definitely a good idea. And I'll, I'll chat with her about it. The invitation style is a little different. It, it doesn't have like okay. multiple pieces and inserts. So that's what makes it a little bit okay. more complex. Uh, but yeah. it's, it's, it's yeah. definitely something that we've chatted about. Um, and we'll see, you know, when that time comes, which, which mm -hmm. way you know, she'd like to go. Um, I do think in that case, the best route is to is probably to reprint. Um, but definitely <laughs> it's more of like something that was, you know, folding with all the layers and all that, then definitely an insert. I think yeah. that makes perfect sense. Um, so, all right. So in case, for those who don't know, Instagram Live automatically cuts off after an hour. So uh, oh. we're approaching that point. <laughs> so I don't want us to- I didn't realize, it didn't seem like we were talking that long. I know, I know. I mean, we still have like five more minutes, but I just don't want us to be like cut off abruptly. So um, mm -hmm. I just wanted to, to say, if anyone has any questions about invitations, please leave it in the comments. But um, also, if you have any parting words, like anything that you think that all brides should know about invitations in general, or especially invitations during this period, like what would you mm -hmm. want to share? Yeah. I think that this is, you know, do, these things here, the, these are the phone file cases, you know, the personalized file cases. I'm seeing a lot of brides who are asking for that because they're, you know, going doing like elopements now um, because of COVID. And I think these are really great, you know, ideas for, for them to do to exchange their, their vows, you know, if they're doing a court wedding. For the meantime, um, a lot of them are doing that now. So this is just like another beautiful piece they can keep if they can't do, you know, the full on wedding right now. So yeah. that's the only thing I wanted to add besides the digital invitations that I think it's a great idea for them, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's definitely, and that's something you can, of course, keep forever as well. Um, but it makes it easier if you're not, if you're not willing, if you're not really into writing uh, things physically, which most yeah. people are. Um, then you can just put your phone in it um, and just let that be, you know, about exactly really you're holding a phone. Um, it's something you can keep forever. It's a beautiful keepsake. And I, and I think that makes perfect sense, especially for an elopement. You don't have as many details, right? You can't, you don't really have like reception flowers and this and that and the third. Right. So the more details that you have, the more it just makes the event, especially when you look back on images, the more it just yeah. makes it like personalized and beautiful. So I definitely think that phone cases, I would definitely recommend um, yeah. for, for any elopement. So yeah, thanks for yeah. that's on that. I think that's a perfect yeah. 
um, perfect parting note. For me, I would say, you know, it's one of those things like this is a very fast developing situation with COVID-19. Originally, you know, I definitely would have recommend re recommended for most people to reschedule weddings till later this year mm -hmm. and in the next year, depending on what's allowed, because there are some yeah. um, vendors who are, and especially venues that are pushing back and only allowing for mm -hmm. a certain period of time um, at a time. But given where we are right now today, um, you know, it's just it's just better wherever possible to reschedule into next year. If you can't, then reschedule as far as you can. And then when you get closer to that date, then reschedule a second time. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's just the best. That's just the best approach. Uh, and just understanding right now we need to control what we can control um, and let go of the things mm -hmm. we can't control. Right. If a venue is saying you can only reschedule out by three months, then reschedule by three months. And then when that point comes, yeah. remind them that, hey, it's time for us to reschedule exactly. again. And do that to make sure you're not you're not losing funds. Um, and then as long mm -hmm. as you haven't sent out invitations for that date, you will be all right. So um, yes. I definitely think I know it's a very emotional period from for many people, but also it just is. understanding that this is something that's affecting everyone, like everyone, everyone, everyone. everyone. Yeah. And um, it's it's unfortunate that it's happening, but at the same time, it gives you more. It, you know, we're just doing the best you can with what you have, and you will that's have it. that. You will have that wedding. It yeah. may be a year later than yeah. you planned, but it will happen. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's just a matter of when, you know? Mm -hmm. And you just have mm -hmm. to do it. You have to just deal with what you can, like what's available yeah. right now. That's it. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Well, That's it was true. really nice talking to you <laughs> and seeing your face. <laughs> and seeing your things and talking and everything. And again, yeah. You know, so showing y'all all these invitations, stuff she made this for my dad again. So I like my dad loves you too. Uh, and that's part of all these invitations, like there's just so much. So if you're one of my clients, you can always stop by the office. I have like, I have a whole box of stuff. So, right? Of stuff. I need to send you some updates. <laughs> please, 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 I love having them. But thank you so much for tuning okay. in today. The replay is going to be on YouTube uh, by tomorrow, and obviously this will be up for 24 hours on Instagram. So thanks so much, everybody, for tuning in. Tell your friends about it. Tell them to come watch, learn a little bit about invitations, and all the best to everybody planning weddings in 2020 or 2021 mm -hmm. or even 2022. Uh, we'll get through this, and your wedding will be awesome. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> bye. Bye. <laughs> all right. Bye. Bye.